Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, nutritional supplements, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, or if you just want to comment or have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. We do have open lines, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to my website, brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites as well. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for one time. $25 fee. You can be in business. You can start your own business, make some money, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, work out of your home, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business all for a one-time $25 fee, even if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee. You can do that. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or sign up directly off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Also, would like to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by none other than Harper's Bazaar Magazine. You can check that out in the May edition or also on our website, truthtreatments.com. Also, our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, continuing on with our discussion of the heart and heart disease and some of the more abstract ideas associated with cardiovascular health, you might say metaphysical ideas. I like, uh, I, I always felt, I always found, pro, found it problematic that we focus just on the physical nature of health. When there's all these other dimensions, the emotional dimension, the mental dimension, even the spiritual dimension that play a role. Now, these could be considered metaphysical and airy-fairy and abstract, I understand. But as somebody who's been in the healing business now for 31 years, more than 31 years, for 35 years, I got to tell you, what I've seen is that there's a lot of folks who don't get better just by doing the physical things, just by supplementing or just by exercising or breathing correctly, all the things that are certainly important. But a lot of folks don't get better just by doing that. And I firmly believe it's because they haven't addressed these more abstract ideas about health. It's very important that if we're going to be serious about leveraging our God-given ability to heal, to recover, to live 120 plus years, we've got to take advantage of all of the dimensions of health and wellness. And this is exemplified by the metaphysical or the abstract nature of the heart, the emotional aspect of the heart, the emotional nature of the heart, the connection between the health of the heart and the health of our emotions. 
We talked about how the heart communicates, really speaks to the rest of the body. It doesn't speak to the body in words, it speaks to the body in electromagnetics. It speaks to the body in the language of fields, of waves, of electronics. We talked about positive emotions and healthy heart, positive emotions and heart wellness, positive emotions and what we call heart coherence. And I think uh, that the fact that there are these metaphysical and non-physical aspects linked to the heart and the circulatory system in general, the blood in general, shouldn't be much of a surprise given the obviously critical and essential nature, uh, critical and essential relationship between the movement of blood, the pumping of the heart, and the life force itself. Every beat of the heart generates an electrical charge. As the blood is circulating through, uh, through the body, it's generating what's called a zeta potential. This electrical charge, this zeta potential, is kind of like a life force. And it doesn't get any more metaphysical than the life force, which is not measurable necessarily physically, although its correlates are measurable in electronics, but the life force itself is not measurable physically, but is undoubtedly real. And this metaphysical aspect of the heart is why throughout history, spiritual and religious wisdom have linked the cardiovascular system with the divinity and the emotional nature and the mental nature uh, and the mind in general, the mind-body. I also believe that these seemingly non-scientific ideas are way more important when it comes to addressing heart health than this simple-minded, primitive, nursery school idea of modern medicine that it's about your cholesterol. This is childish. It's silly. Uh, cholesterol and statin drugs and the idea that we can just jury rig an unhealthy heart back to wellness with stents and balloons and ablations and bypasses which are essentially the medical models version of bubble gum and bailing wire and duct tape. We duct tape our heart back together. This is the ignorance of the medical model. Now I understand that heroic medicine has a role to play and if you have a heart attack or stroke or an aneurysm you're going to need duct tape and bailing wire. But really what we want to be focusing on is the real causes of disease, real causes of heart disease, and the real power we have inherent in our bodies to heal, to recover, to grow, and repair. On our last few episodes, we've been talking about the intelligence of the heart, the heart brain or the heart mind. We said the heart has a neurological nature that makes it a sort of mini brain. This is what neurocardiology is all about. Neurocardiology is not airy-fairy, it's hardcore science. And the folks at HeartMath have been talking about neurocardiology since the 1980s. The neurons, the nerve cells in the heart, are linked to the nerve cells, the neurons in the brain, and the conductivity of the heart, the pacing of the heart, the rhythms of the heart, all are related and play a very important role in how we think and how we feel. The heart contains something called ICA cells, intrinsic cardiac adrenergic cells. These are cells that release dopamine. We spent a lot of time talking about dopamine about a month or two ago. Dopamine being a, a reward chemical and previously it was thought that dopamine was only secreted in the brain. Today we know the heart secretes dopamine. Conversely, how we think and how we feel mentally and emotionally play an important role in the functioning of the heart. And they have a very important role to play on how, in how healthy or how not healthy our heart is. Positive thoughts, positive emotions create a smooth and coherent heart rhythm. And because the heart is a master conductor that synchronizes all of the other rhythms in the body, all of the other, uh, all the other rhythms of the structures of the body, and in fact all of the other rhythms of all the cells of the body, the cells are oscillating in a rhythm too. And the oscillations in the cells' rhythms and the cells' energy, the oscillations in our tissues and our structures, these are all uh, uh, synchronized by the oscillations or the waves in the heart. How we think and how we feel via the heart thus affects every single cell, structure, organ, tissue in the body. How we, so important, you guys. How we think and how we feel via the mediating force of the heart. This is no longer metaphysics. This is now hardcore electronics, hardcore bioelectronics. How we think and how we feel via the mediating force of the heart affects every single structure, cell, tissue, system in the body. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on 
the bright side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and join me in my personal mission, which I've had now for 35 years, to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. I first started to get into nutritional supplementation when I was a mere teenager. As a weightlifter and bodybuilder, we knew all about nutrition before anybody else did back in the late 80s, middle to late 80s. Bodybuilders and weightlifters and athletes are always looking for whatever edge they can find. And even we would read the muscle magazines and find out about CLA, conjugated linoleic acid and whey protein and creatine. And I really, it really hit me hard that you could change the body with nutrition. You could change the body with nutritional supplementation. Then I started to apply it to my uh, pharmacy practice as a pharmacy student and then as a pharmacy uh, and then as a young pharmacist. And I realized that we're not sick folks, we're starving. We're missing key nutrients. We're eating the wrong foods. And of course, it's not just foods and it's not just nutritional supplementation, but nutrients and the physical dimension play a very important role when it comes to being healthy. Exercise, oxygenation, nutritional supplementation. I'll tell you what does not play an important role when it comes to being healthy. Anything the medical model can give you. Drugs don't play a role in getting you healthy. There's no drug on planet Earth that will make you healthy with perhaps the exception of antibiotics, but that's arguable given what antibiotics do to uh, the, the bacteria in the gut and the bacteria in the skin and the bacteria in the lungs. There's nothing in the medical model, for the most part, there's nothing in the medical model that can restore us back to health with the exception of possibly stitching us up if we break something. But as far as chronic long-term progressive illness goes, there's nothing. Zippo, nada, your doctor can do, period. This is only in the realm of the divine force through our own personal spirituality, mental nature, emotional nature, and what we do physically. But that's good news because that frees us from the tyranny of the medical model. No longer is it necessary to interface with the medical model. This is why the government is now mandating, forcing people to interface with the medical model, at least pay for it through uh, the Affordable Health Care Act. Because people are now beginning to, it's beginning to dawn on people over the last 10 to 20 years, it's beginning to dawn on people that the medical model doesn't work. All right, 844 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls in our next segment. We're talking about the intelligence of the heart, all of the things the heart does for us that we don't hear about from Dr. Oz, that the medical model does not tell us about. Sounds airy-fairy, sounds metaphysical, but it plays a major role in how healthy or not healthy the heart is. Heart has a memory. Heart has a brain. The heart has neurology. The heart, this heart memory, by the way, is very interesting. There's this whole phenomena of heart transplant patients getting the memories of their donors. And this is not, this is not anecdotal. This is scientific. There, uh, there are heart transplant patients who not only get the hearts of their donors, but they get their memories too. According to uh, Dr. Paul Pearsall, who's a cardiologist, he wrote a book called The Heart's Code. Great book, by the way. If you have any, know anybody or if you have any heart health issues or know anybody with any heart health issues, get the Heart's Code, Dr. Paul Pearsall, P-E-A-R-S-A-L-L. -L. He writes in the book about uh, numerous reports of emotions and memories and experiences being transferred along with the transplanted heart, memories and emotions and experiences being transferred from the donor to the recipient. In the book, The Heart's Code, Dr. Pearsall talks about over 70 heart transplant recipients and describes different stories, various stories of patients who want to eat foods that they never liked before or becoming athletic when they weren't athletic before, developing skills that they never had before, all based on the habits and the hobbies and the predilections of the previous owners of the heart. Now tell me how that works if the heart doesn't have a memory, if the heart doesn't have a brain. One very interesting example was this lady named Claire Sylvia, S-Y-L-V-I-A. She got the heart from a donor who was an 18-year-old man from Maine. He died in a motorcycle accident. And after her surgery, all of a sudden, Sylvia started to like beer. She never liked beer before. All of a sudden, she started becoming a beer connoisseur. Then she developed this uncontrollable urge to eat fried chicken. And she never liked chicken before. And green peppers. She never liked green peppers. All of a sudden, she loved green peppers. And then she started to behave more aggressively and impulsively, and she'd have recurring dreams about a man named Tim. 
And she did some research news, via newspaper, newspapers and obituaries. Hospitals don't like to tell the transplant or any, any transplant donors who the recipients are. Uh, you know, they like to keep, keep confidentiality. But so she, she did some research and uh, she uh, identified her donor who, guess what? His name was Tim and he loved beer and green peppers. And she ended up writing a book about this. It's called A Change of Heart. You can get it off Amazon.com. She just details, uh, it's her memoir about her experiences. Another story, this one's told by a guy named Greg Braden, absolutely brilliant bio, biologist, physicist. Yeah, I think he's a physicist or biophysicist. Greg Braden, written a whole bunch of books about the heart and about the global heart. Got a lot of YouTube videos, Braden, B-R-A-D-E-N, Greg Braden. Um, he tells the story of an 80-year-old woman who got the heart of a 13-year-old boy, and pretty soon she started craving Kentucky Fried Chicken, which she never liked before. And as it turns out, of course, the 13-year-old boy loved Kentucky Fried Chicken. He would eat it almost every day. One of my favorite stories, this might be my favorite story, actually. This is a Greg Braden story. It's about a girl who's given the heart of a victim who was murdered. It was a woman who was murdered, and the murder was unsolved. So they, they, the heart was okay. So they took the heart, they put it into this 13-year-old girl. And then pretty soon, this 13-year-old girl who had the new heart, who had the heart of the murder victim, she began having nightmares. And in the nightmare, she's being chased by some guy. And eventually, she, you, you probably know where this is going. And eventually, she goes into psychotherapy. She's able to describe the man chasing her in her nightmares. And she, they get a forensic artist, and he draws a picture of the man uh, based on the little girl's description. The guy, they catch the guy. He gets convicted. He gets sentenced, all based on the information coming from the heart, <laughs> coming from the murder victim's heart. That's a Greg Braden story. That's on, I got that one off YouTube. So more and more, we're understanding how the heart and its functions and its abilities transcend, far transcend its role as a muscular pump, as a mechanical pump. This idea of a muscular pump and a mechanical pump is also wrong, by the way. The idea that the heart pumps the blood throughout the body, it doesn't even make physics sense. The blood is this heavy, thick liquid, viscous, sticky liquid, and it has to go through... 50 to 60,000 miles of blood vessels, some of them microscopically small, and it has to do it in a big circle around the body. And from a hydraulic standpoint, from a physics standpoint, there's no way a little pump can push all that fluid, all five gallons of fluid through 60,000 miles of blood vessels. There's no way that can happen. Well, it probably does, has some effect on it, but there's, there's this thing called capillary action, which is basically how tiny little atoms of water, molecules of water, sort of force themselves up tiny vessels in the same way water goes up a tree from the roots. It's called capillary action. So we have so much crazy ideas about the heart, mythology about the heart, and it doesn't serve us. The notion of the heart as an electromagnetic field, a field generator, as an electromagnetic field generator, is just one of the ways that we're bursting the bubble, the idea, the meme, of the heart as a pump and the heart, is, uh, heart disease as being subject to cholesterol deposits and, and egg yolks. So much more to say here. But we got to take a break. And we'll come back with your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you're on a statin drug and want to get off that statin drug, we can help you. If you have heart health issues, you know somebody with heart health issues, we can help you there as well. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get to your calls here in just a moment. From the journal Cell Research, how to trick your heart into thinking you exercise. How do you like that? Now, you don't even need to work out because researchers have discovered that there's a protein called cardiotropin, cardiotropin 1, that can trick the heart into growing and pumping more blood just as it does in response to exercise. Hmm, interesting. Now you don't have to work out. You just get yourself some cardiotropin 1. At least that's, that, that's what scientists are looking to do. See, when you exercise, your heart grows. When you exercise, your heart gets stronger. When you exercise, you get more blood vessels 
you get more collateral blood vessels that by, uh, create natural bypasses to oxygenate the heart. When you exercise, your heart is healthier. Could it be that our epidemic of heart disease is more about our sedentary lifestyles than it is about cholesterol? Hmm, very good chance. Well, now you can use some, get yourself some cardiotrope and you don't even have to go to the gym. Actually, you'd still have to go to the gym because this stuff's not out yet. They just, they just started doing this research. This is, from, uh, this is from today, actually, August 8th, 2017. All right, prostate cancer cells become shape shifters to spread to distant organs. This is from the July 26th issue of Nature Communications. This is so fascinating because what it says is that cancer cells do whatever they need to do to grow. A cancer cell is an unbelievable thing. A cancer cell is a normal cell that is so freaked out, that is so starved and suffocated and toxic, that it is now in coping mode. A cancer cell is a coping cell. It's a cell that is coping with a toxic, starved, and suffocated environment. And this is how cool the human body is. This is how cool the, the, the life force is. When a cell is starved and suffocated and toxic, it will shapeshift. It will actually form, uh, turn into a different form of life it will actually become a bacteria or more like a bacteria than a human cell. A cancer cell is a cell that is so at its wit's end, it doesn't know what the heck else to do. It, it now becomes a different type of cell. It shape shifts and becomes a, a, a similar to a bacterial cell that grows and grows and grows. Difference, one of the differences between a bacterial cell and a human cell is human cells listen to their neighbors. Human cells are interested in the group. Human cells are interested in the organism of which, they are, uh, which is composed of them. Bacterial cells don't have such a group. Bacterial cells only care about themselves. Bacteria live by themselves. They live, they live in colonies sometimes, of course, but they don't form organs. They don't form large systems that we know of. Bacterial cells are uh, individual cells, while human cells are group cells. Now, once a, a, bacteria, a cancer cell has attacked the organ or has, uh, has turned itself, once a cell has turned itself into a cancer cell, its next mission is to spread. And now we find out that cancer cells can actually shape shift again as they spread to distant organs. This allows them to squeeze into different parts of the body, squeeze between different tissues, this shape shifting property. Cancer cells are unbelievable. And you know what's really cool about cancer cells is it takes a lot of damage and toxicity and suffocation and starvation for a cell to turn cancerous. And even then, the body has all kinds of mechanisms built into it, built into the immune system, which kills the cancer. In fact, even cancer cells themselves or cells themselves have a self-destruct program that, kill, uh, that, that allows them to commit suicide before they turn cancerous. There are so many fail-safe mechanisms here when it comes to cancer that really it, the fact that we have so many people that get cancer is just a, a, a testimony to how friggin' sick we are and how starved and suffocated and toxic our whole culture is in more ways than one. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a, well, let's see, let's, uh, let's grab the phones. I got a letter I want to read here, uh, but uh, a bunch of folks have been holding for a while. Let's go to Julio in Chicago. Good morning, Julio. Welcome to the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben, it's a pleasure speaking with you. Been a fan of yours for a while. Glad to finally talk to you on Thank the you. phone. Uh, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, so I'm uh, 27. I'll be 28 later this month. And I've noticed some interesting things in my body. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Don't, don't say no more. Just hang on a second, Julio. What you are experiencing is what is called the wall. And I want everybody who's under 27 to listen up. Because when we are younger than 27, in our early 20s, our teenagers, we think we're invulnerable. And then around 27 or 28, what's, what's happened to you, Julio, happens to everybody. Ask anybody who is older than, say, 30 or 32 or 33, and they will tell you there's this thing called the wall. And that's when your entire body starts to change. And where things you used to be able to do, you can't do anymore. You start to notice things. You start to feel weird pains and aches and start to lose your hair. And all kinds of changes start to accrue. And it sounds like you, Julio, have hit the wall. So I think I've hit the. Yeah, I think I've hit the, I think I've hit the wall. I've noticed like baldness on my chest hair, yeah. arm, okay. and my hair. So I'm wondering, Shocking. is it like it, an autoimmune issue? Is there no, something no, wrong no. that I need to do? No, or what, 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 no. What Here's the dealio. Here's the deal. You said you're losing some hair on the chest, also on your head, right? Correct. Well, 
well, mainly on my chest. It's like two noticeable like patches of bald on well, my that's, chest. Well, that's that's a that is not a hair loss problem because uh, hair usually you usually get more hair on your uh, on your chest. So that's not right. necessarily a hair loss problem. That's that's a little bit different. The hair loss that occurs to most people or a lot of guys when they're in their twenties in their late twenties, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, when they hit the wall, is in the head. What you're experiencing is actually something different because you should be getting more hairy. That's what happens to guys as they get older. They get hairier. They don't lose hair on their chest. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. If you're... Yeah, sir. Okay. So you got, here's how you handle this, Julio. What else is happening in your body? You don't just lose hair on the chest. Now, you may have some – the, the other things that go, are going on in your body may be subtle, but they're there because this is not – this is a secondary issue, hair loss in the chest. There's got to be some primary issue underneath. And if you've been listening to the program, you know what I'm going to say. It's going to involve digestion. It's going to involve blood sugar, and then it's going to involve cortisol and then ultimately yeah. the thyroid. So yeah, all of those, yeah, I have low energy levels for myself. You go. Uh, digestive problems are not where it used to be. There you go, uh, my I think, friend. I think a little irregular heartbeat. So I, I, it's, <laughs> it's other stuff that I'm noticing as well. So that's where you're going to work. That's where you're going to work and starts with the digestive system. So here's the thing. Chances are pretty good because you're young. You were, you know, you're still young, of course, but you know, you're a teenager, you're in your twenties. You could drink whatever you want to drink and eat whatever you want to eat and smoke whatever you want to smoke and then go to work the next day and then do it all again, you know, the, the following evening, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That can no longer happen. What you got to start doing is start working number one on your digestive system. Get, do a swear V cleanse. If you're doing longevity, get the swear of, even if you're not call 866-735-2470, get some swear V, do a swear V cleanse, food diary, elimination diet. You got to start to eliminate problem foods. Now you got decades ahead of you to, to you know, of life. It's not like you're going to die tomorrow or fall apart tomorrow, but you're going to gradually fall apart. It'll be subtle at first. It'll be, you know, you, it'll be nothing that you, is going to be dramatic probably you know, praise God, hopefully, but they'll be there. You'll start to notice little things. So it's important that you sooner rather than later, I'm not going to tell you it's like urgent at this point, but sooner rather than later, you start to address your digestive issues. The next thing is the blood sugar issues. And this has a lot to do with your manliness because there's a very important relationship between insulin resistance and a lack of manliness. And manliness, I'm talking not just for men, for women too. I'm talking about drive. I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about growth and muscle, muscle growth and repair. Hang on, Julio. We'll finish up when we come back. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. We're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Talking to Julio in Chicago. Julio. Yes, everything, sir. everything you're describing is what we all have to do. 28 or, tw- or not, sick or not, healthy or not, whatever. These are all the things we all have to do. We got to work on the digestive system. And if you're never t- done anything really uh, specifically for your health, if you're just kind of living your life, you want to start off with a swear OV cleanse, hit the reset button fast for a couple of days. If you don't, you know, either fast or do a swear OB cleanse. Then you do a food diary. You write down everything, uh, everything you, you eat, starting with uh, trying to eat as simply as possible, just single kinds of foods. Instead of a chick tuna fish sandwich, just have a piece of tuna. Instead of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just have a peanut kind of thing. So you, you can isolate the problems and you, it's usually your favorite food. So that's a good place to start. And then uh, you start eliminating those foods and you patch simultaneous with the food elimination, you patch up the gut with probiotics, fermented foods, vegetable juices, aloe vera gel. This is like a, this is like a bright side primer on how to take care of yourself no matter what the heck you're dealing with. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. Aging is the same as a disease, even though I'm not saying aging is a disease, but you got to do the same things for aging that you do for a dis-ease or for anything just to be healthy. Swear of cleanse slash fast. Food diary, elimination diet, patch up the gut with everything you can think of to patch up the gut. Calorie restriction and then intermittent fasting will also help. The ketogenic diet will also help. The next step is insulin and blood sugar. And as I was saying before the break, your, the, the male system, and I don't want women to think it's just guys, it, it has to do with testosterone, which women make too. 
It's about building. It's about growth. It's about repair. It's about drive. And the more sugar we eat, the more feminized we become. The more insulin resistant we are, the more, the, the more difficult it is for the body to become anabolic, to build and to grow. So keeping your sugars da- sugar intake down. Sugar is given to the masses for domestication by governments. And by sugar, I'm including grains. Do you understand this? Why do you think sugar is like subsidized? Why do you think sugar costs a dollar a pound or two dollars a pound and never goes up in price? It's because right. sugar is given to the masses to domesticate. We are domesticated by sugar and by bread and by grains. And by domestication, I mean we become weak, we become sick, we become sedentary, we become fat, we don't think clearly, all the things, and, and sick and diseased, all the things that we deal with. So keeping your sugar intake under control and sensitizing your body to insulin is critical. And you could do that, obviously, by not eating, this, not eating those kinds of insulin-spiking foods, uh, but also using nutrients like zinc and the B-complex and, and protein and omega fats and all of the nutrients, interestingly, that help your body process sugar are also building nutrients. They're nutrients that are important for the building process. Niacin, vitamin B3, arginine, taurine, these are amino acids. Anything you do for blood sugar from the direction of not eating the stuff and from the direction of helping your body process the stuff. And selenium, I forgot about that one. That's also important. More fiber is another great strategy for helping your body process and, and, and for reducing sugar intake or sugar cravings and for helping your body deal with sugar. And then, this is so important, Julio, what I'm gonna say here, relax. We gotta relax the body, lighten up, psychologically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, we gotta feel safe. Under conditions of lack of safety, the body will not grow, uh, grow and repair maximally to the degree that we're out of safety. If we're completely out of safety, growth shuts off. Ask anybody who's taken prednisone for a long period of time. One of the classic side effects of prednisone is, is bone, bone deterioration, tissue deterioration, collagen deterioration, while we get fat. If you want to know, if you want a, a classic example of how our bodies decay and deteriorate, just look at the side effect profile of prednisone. You know what I'm talking about, Coolio, the drug prednisone? No, I've never actually heard of that drug. Prednisone I usually, is... Co- I usually stay away from those drugs. Okay. Prednisone is a medication that is given to duplicate cortisol when you're inflamed or you have an allergy or an allergic reaction of some kind. So they give you prednisone, which is basically cortisol. And the side effects of prednisone, which are notorious, it's known as one of the most toxic drugs of all, and that's saying something. Uh, the side effects of prednisone are like what happens to us when we age. So that gives you proof positive that, uh, of the relationship between stress hormone and aging or in stress hormone and disease and stress hormone and bodily deterioration. Relax stress hormone. Now, psychological and emotional stuff, absolutely, but there's also physiologic reasons why cholesterol or by cortisol goes up. Oxygenation, for example, will make cortisol go up. Too much body fat will make cortisol go up. Of course, sugar and digestive toxicity will make cortisol go up too. So relaxing the body, using anti-cortisol uh, supplementation, pregnenolone, we talk about that all the time on this program, progesterone cream for men as well as for women, um, selenium, uh, uh, vitamin A, vitamin E, all of these have an anti-stress hormone effect. Essential fats, so using all of your nutritional supplements to balance out cortisol and, and make sure you're practicing deep, deep, deep rhythmic breathing, deep, slow, rhythmic breathing, as well as a little bit of exercise. Julio, I got to motivate. I hope I helped you out, buddy. And thank you for the kind Absolutely. words. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for everything. Thank all you. All right. Man. Take care, man. Have a great day. All right. Let's go to uh, Glenn in Texas. What's up, Glenn? Good morning. Welcome to the bright side. Hi, how are you today? I am good. What's going on, my friend? Well, I wanted to call you, uh, a friend of mine recommended I call you. Her name is Paul Purcell. She also lives down here in Houston. Um, and I, um, my son spoke with her the other day and said that she had made a lot of progress with an autoimmune uh, condition she had. Well, wait, wait, hang on a second, Glenn. She called me already? I've spoken to her on the phone? Yes, sir. I believe you have. She okay. said you may remember you may not. Her name is Paula. Okay. Okay. Well, hang on before you continue. Uh, what was her autoimmune disease? Do you know? You know what? She didn't tell me. Okay. No worries. And I gave her a protocol? Yes, sir. And it helped her? I believe so. Yes, she Well, said it. that's good news. I like hearing that. So go ahead. Uh, yeah. Well, I thought maybe you had talked to her or you remembered her. But anyway, you know, I talk to so many people on the phone. It's hard for me to keep track. I'm sure, sure if I talk to her a little bit, I'll know. I'll, I'll remember. But uh, the protocols I, give auto for, uh, I gave her for autoimmune disease, guess what, Glenn? They're the same. 
It doesn't matter whether it's multiple sclerosis or, it does, or, or it's hypothyroid, or Hashimoto's thyroid, or it's more, uh, or pancre- uh, type 1 diabetes, pancreatic autoimmune disease, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the same stuff. The, the diagnosis doesn't matter. Only specialists care about special diagnosis because they get paid that way, and it's not fair. They don't do anything to help anybody. Go ahead, real quick, Len, because we're going to run out yeah, of time. It, it, it's... Uh... Uh, I've been I've dealt with a nephrologist. I have a uh, mine is called Wegner's. It's very okay. rare. Yeah, I know all about Wegner's. Okay. Oh, okay. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. First of all, we only got about a minute, so I can't really go into uh, the whole deal with Wegner's. But first of all, how old are you? I'm 59. You're 59. So you ha- did you just get diagnosed with it, or you had you had something going on for last um, last fall? All right. So Wegner's is just an it's just an immune problem. They call it a, a granuloma. It's like a vasculitis in the kidney. Right. You have it in the kidneys, right? Right. It's an inflammation of the blood vessels. It's an inflammatory um, condition of blood vessels, and it probably has to do with the immune system attacking them. It could also involve deterioration and degeneration of the blood vessels. But that makes perfect sense because the blood carries all the dirt. The blood carries all the toxicity. The blood is uh, dependent on oxygenation, and once the blood becomes toxic and sludgy, it's very easy to get blood diseases and and granulomas and and, and vascular diseases. So basically they name it, and you think you have Wegner's, but you really just have messed up circulatory system. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. What what you've got is a deterioration of the blood vessels. So here's what you need to do. The kidneys, are are, they're your filters. So they're extra dependent on on cleanliness. Because if the blood is toxic, that's bad enough. But then when it goes through the kidneys, the kidneys are very, they're made up of very, very tiny blood vessels. They're highly subject to damage. They're highly, and this is why kidney disease is so epidemic. So you got to first and foremost, clean your blood. The blood gets dirty. How does the blood get dirty? From food, right? Have you listened to this program before, Glenn? This is my first time. All right. You've got to focus on food. The blood gets dirty from food. That's the main way. Now, if you're injecting things through the skin, that's another story. I'm assuming you're not doing that. So no. it's food. Food, food, food. Now, that means do, just run the archive back of what I just told Julio. It's the same thing. Focus on food. Do you see how we, our bodies break down generically? It's not a special issue. So you've got to focus on food, do the swear of cleanse, food diary, elimination diet, the whole story. You're going to need to focus on sugar, sugar destroys blood vessels. Sugar destroys a lot of things, but especially blood vessels when it becomes elevated. If you're 59, the odds are 99 to 1 that you've got dysglycemia, i.e. messed up blood sugar. Are you diabetic? Have you been diagnosed that way? No, sir, I have not. Okay, so consider yourself a diabetic. All right, Treat yourself like a diabetic. Do the, all the low sugar things we just talked about, Julio. Use nutritional supplementation. You know, It's the same thing, and I, I'm out of time. If you like, why don't you send me an email, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number, and I'll call you back, okay? Okay, well, I'm sorry, what's your email again? Ben, B-E-N, at K for King, S for Sam, C for Cat, O for Oscar, dot com. Okay, All right, okay, give me a couple days, too. All right, buddy. Okay. Thank, you for, thank you for your call, Glenn. You guys, do you see the, 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 every, all our diseases are the same thing? And once we nail that down, we will be free from this medical model that it has enslaved us. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. And I guess that doesn't matter, does it? We'll be back tomorrow on the Bright Side. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.